All right, so this is my key talking to nobody explodes prototype uh, to show you. Um, what I'm going to demonstrate is basically it working because um, it's just about in that state um, where I've got something really good to show off. Um, you're going to see the timer, which is kind of the main control piece for everything here, and um, with the strike lights uh, and the buzzer as well. You've also got the button, simple wise, and Simon says. Um, there's also actually um, the keypad programmed in there. I'll kind of give you a demonstration of how that might have looked, um, but I don't have any kind of physical module to show you there. Um, so it's just buttons at the moment. It's not very really exciting to actually show you, um, but I'll just kind of talk you through it in a little bit. Um, but essentially this would have been one half of the bomb. Obviously there'd be another bit on the other side as well. Um, the case would have been a bit thicker and you'd have had the um, screens and indicators and stuff like that um, that you could kind of plug in as well. Um, that hasn't been implemented. I've kind of run out of wood uh, and skill to, to kind of put that together. Um, but I think this is kind of good enough for the moment. Um, and I'll move on to kind of the next steps um, later on. But I'll just show you kind of how that works. Um, but when you switch it on, obviously it's ready for a game. Um, so the screen will help you kind of set up the game in advance. Um, it'll give you the instructions as they come. So here we've got for the button, um, a white button that says press. And all you'd have to do is kind of unscrew the button there, um, pop a new one in uh, and get that ready. All right, and there we go. Um, we've got a couple of um, stickers here um, with some of the um, kind of symbols and things ready and a bunch of other caps to go on the button. Um, they came with a big pack of 10, so I could spray paint plenty different other colors as well and they just screw in nice and easy there. Um, so if you go back over, um, the um, next instruction will be shown until we give the button a press, just to confirm that. Um, and there we go, we've got the um, instructions for the simple wires there. So it's telling you to put the black wire in the first position, yellow in the fourth and yellow in the sixth, and leave the rest blank. Um, and again, you just swap the wires round. Um, and as soon as it detects wires in the right place, it'll automatically advance on to the next bit. So let me just do that. All right, so I'll just pop the wires in um, and they just slot in and out, which makes it really easy to, to set that up as well. Um, to actually disarm that, you can pull them, you can snip the wires, it doesn't matter as long as the connection is severed. Um, but now that's in, um, it moves on to the keypad in this instance, um, which is just these four buttons here, so it's not worth kind of going through. Um, but it tells you the column number from the manual, um, just in case you can't make out the symbols there. Um, but there's little kind of diagrams of what the symbols will be on the button, allowing you to set up those buttons. Um, but essentially the game's ready to play at this point, so let me just um, kind of press a button to acknowledge the keypad. Um, the Adrenaline will think the whole thing is ready to go and we should get the game to start. So um, what we've got here um, is obviously the game and it's played with exactly the same rules as in the manual so we can go through that right now. Um, we'll start with wires as I think that is first in the manual. So here we've got three wires. If there are no red wires, cut the second wire. So let me just do that. Okay, it's cut and it's pulled out as well because the wire isn't attached very clearly. Um, but um, the green indicator light's on, no strikes or anything like that, ready to go. Um, the next one, we've got the button. Um, for a white press button, let me just have a quick look. Um, I think the car indicator light on the back was on if the button is white and has that and we have to hold it down. So let me just do that with a hand you can see the module with. Hold it down. Um, the colour strip's gone red um, and with the red strip you release it when the countdown timer has a 1 in any position. So let me just wait a moment. And there we go. We've got a green light there. Um, and then we've got one last module. So let me just have a look around at the serial number, which is now on the screen since the game has started. Um, we have got um, no vowels, um, just a G and a V by the sounds of it. So if we go through to the manual for this one with no vowels and a yellow flash, we should press red. Yellow blue is a red yellow. Red, yellow, <laughs> red. It's very hard to do one-handed. So a yellow, blue, yellow, red is a red, yellow, red, blue. I got that right. 
Is that right? Red, yellow, red, blue. Oh, it's a five stage one as well. Red, yellow, red, blue, blue. The light's on, the time has stopped, showing you the time um, left on the clock. Um, and that's it, that's the game. And what will happen now is uh, the whole thing will reset back to five. The screen will show you different indicator lights there, different setup for the next game. Um, and it's ready to go essentially, so you can kind of change the button, change the wires, um, and it's infinitely replayable. So that is how it is at the moment, all kind of working out. Um, so essentially, um, with this prototype, it's got me as far as it has. It's been really good. Uh, it obviously shows me that I can do something and make it look quite good as well. I mean, the look's obviously very important, um, but it's also kind of fully functional. Um, but the way I've been doing it has a lot of drawbacks, because um, I was quite new to Arduinos and electronics and things like that as well. Didn't have that much experience. Um, so I did what was easiest at the time, um, but I've kind of designed myself into a pretty tricky situation trying to do some of the more complicated things like having more screens um, especially kind of um, TFT screens instead of really simple displays as well um, just one one Arduino is going to really struggle to have that many things going on um, especially have two sides to this as well so maybe kind of 12 boxes for it to control um, so I'm going to completely kind of change my um, approach uh, going forward and, and try out something a bit um, a bit less complicated essentially it's going to have a little, bit more hardware um but it should be a bit simpler um from kind of case to case module to module as well um so plenty to do um but this is a really good kind of proof of concept i'm quite proud of how this looks so hopefully i'll kind of take it to the next level by um going down a different route um but it should make it a bit more interesting a bit more um flexible um and automatic and easy to use as well which is is what we're really looking for